Well, so this topic, redirecting module on put to standalone message, this is already delving a little bit into deeper, more advanced material. There are times when in more advanced simulations, especially when in different flight modes you might be mimicking, that you need two or more modules to write to the same message. I call those things gateway messages. Um, so here's an illustration that you have of that. Right, this figure has two, two different modules. They wouldn't both be executed at the same time. So there's extra logic like events that we can set up and so forth that either this flight software stack runs or this flight software stack runs. So one and two, but in the end, they have to write to the same one. So think of this scenario. One of them, module one, might want to just have you point in hill frame. So you want to line up with the orbit frame. And module two might say, no, I need you to point at a particular star, We're doing some measurements there, right? In the end, they both generate the same output type called an attitude reference. And that attitude reference is then used by attitude tracking error or other modules to do a control and point you in the right direction. And uh, I don't want to have to duplicate all that code. I just want to have either module one run or module two. So if we had the module three input message subscribed to either module one or two, we would have to resubscribe on the fly every time we want to switch going, hey, I'm running hill, point, hill pointing or uh, point at the stars mode. And we don't want to have to redirect the stuff all the time. So the way we can avoid it is we make a standalone message. You already know how to do that, right? And what we then do is if this is attitude reference, we would create a standalone attitude reference message. This module then subscribes to that one standalone message. It's the gateway. And all the other modules now, instead of writing to their own output message, we need to redirect them to actually write directly into the standalone message. And that's a really powerful feature. So let's get specific. This script, here's some highlights. It has two modules. One of them is a C module. One of them is a C++, the same dummy modules we've been using in all these quick, quick start tutorials. And I have a standalone C message and a standalone C++ message. It's the same message type, just one's wrapped with the C interface, one's wrapped with the C++ interface, as we've been doing before. And I want to run this module, but instead of it writing into its own output, it needs to write into this external message. And um, same with the C++ module. So that's the idea. Now, how do we do this? Let's start with the C code. The C code is a little bit more complex. Besides including messaging, there's this extra library, this Python package that gets created with Basilisk called C message, C interface, Pi for Python. So we import messaging, as you can see here, and then we also have to import this extra package. This allows us to create a C wrapped message object. We don't typically use those in Python, in Basilisk. We just use the C++ because it's easier. It connects to everything. But if I'm writing from a module like this into that message, it needs to be the same type. For example, up here in that C module one, we cannot redirect its output into a C++ wrapped message object because C doesn't know C++. And the same thing with the C++ module currently, it only knows how to write to C++ wrapped messages, not directly to a C message, so we can't crisscross. So anyway, that's something to keep in mind. So here, if I have a C module and I want to redirect its message, I must create a C wrapped message, standalone message. And that's why this extra include is required. The rest of the script is pretty standard by now. We make one C module, we make a C++ module, and now we want to, this is the new code. So we're going to start out with C. So up here, I talk about it generally, right? You pull this new interface message package, dot some message type, and then it's called message underscore so MSG underscore C. This will create the standalone message object. Like we also did this in C++ already. You've seen that. This is how we do this in a C wrapped interface. And uh, so this is attitude guidance, it would be at guide message underscore C. And then the next step is we have to actually redirect our own module, point it to write not to its own message, but point it to write to another message. And uh, that's the command. So that C message C interface dot, you know, attitude guidance message or whatever you have, underscore C underscore add author. This makes you now an author, this module, that's the module that I have. And this is the module's output message object. 
and I'm redirecting it to be an author of this standalone message. So that's this generic stuff. Let's jump back to the script and see how this looks when we do it here. So here our message type is flight software module template, right? So instead of some message, it's flight software module template. And I have a shorthand for that import because I imported it as this string. So now I'm creating a standalone C message object by invoking this package, giving it the message type followed by message underscore C in brackets. That creates, so this one line makes now a standalone C message object of this type. I not actually creating any data for this. I'm not going to write data to it like I do otherwise with standalone messages because other modules are actually going to write into this message. So I don't have to worry about the writing part. Now, to make this module one, the C module, instead of writing to its own internal message object, making it using here, flat software module template add author, you can see here, at the end, I'm gonna make it right into this standalone C message. So that's the syntax. That's for C. Now let's look at C++, definitely much easier. It's the same thing we did before, right? With the last example, we showed how to make a standalone message. That was actually a C++ wrapped message. So if I have a certain message type, like flat software module template, you just call that with message brackets from the messaging package. And this will create now this copy. So if you wanted to write data to it, we would do CPP message dot write and you gave it the data. That's the stuff we saw in the prior lecture. Now we wanna, now that we have the standalone message object with a C++ wrapper, we wanna make sure we can actually um, redirect module two to write to it. And the C++, this becomes really nice. All you have to do is say data out message equal to this. And this will be redirected automatically that if module two writes to its output, its output internally becomes identical to this external one. The handles are the same. So this can also work with multiple um, you know, modules redirecting to this one CPP message. They will all point to the same message object automatically. And that's kind of nice. Okay, so before we run the script, how do we actually know what the output is? So I'm gonna just actually read these messages. Earlier, we talked about how to set up a recorder, a basilisk module that will log it and give you time and all that stuff. But sometimes you just wanna run the, here, I'm running it for one second, a really quick simulation. And I just wanna read the message. And there is a read method that you can add. So I'm gonna take the, the C module, its output message, and I'm gonna read it and then dot, data vector because it gives back a structure. All of this command here will return that structure of the message. And then inside that structure, there's a data vector that I want to actually plot or not plot, in this case, print and see what the values are. And I'm doing that there. And then the standalone C message, I'm also going to read it. And it's the same type. So just dump the data vector and I'll see what both are. For the C++ object, it's the same syntax. C++ objects dot whatever the output message object is dot read will give you a copy without a timestamp. It's just right now I've stopped the simulation, executed and extended. I'm just gonna get a copy of the payload and then within the payload find data vector. So the syntax is exactly the same between C and C++. That's cool. But what's gonna happen here? Well, let's take a look. I'll bring up the terminal. I'm gonna run this script. It goes very fast. And things we're going to worry about is the end here. So you can see, let me bring this over here. So this first line that we had where we tried to print out, we, we read what the, mod, the C module's output message was. And you know, while this code does some stuff, the output messages actually should have been 200, the way this runs. And it's 000. Now, why did that happen? Well. Module one is directed to not write to itself, but to write to this external one. And that's why if you logged the module's output message, you wouldn't get anything because the module is not writing to this message object. It's writing to this external one. And sure enough, the C message object becomes 200. That's the expected result for this module to run twice. It just adds one and one to zero initial value. The C++ module, on the other hand, I can record the module's output message or the standalone message. 
but because we set them equal, I mean, they point to the same message object, they're going to be recorded both correctly if you wanted to do that. So that's just a subtle distinction. Typically, I wouldn't, if I'm redirecting, I, I wouldn't be recording the module's output message. I would always be recording and checking the standalone message because that's what everything writes to. That's kind of, if you just do that, you never have to worry about it's C or C++. Anyway, a quick tutorial in case you do get into a situation where you want to write and redirect your module to write into something else like this. Okay, have fun with redirecting. <laughs>